Hey folks! How's it going? Time for another fortnightly session of Girl Underground. Because bi-weekly is such a terrible term. Uh, hey, I'm Strash. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. I'm one of the regular streamers here. Uh, you can find me at Strash A on the internets. And I will be playing Bima, who's a cat-like master thief, uh, accompanying our girl uh, in, a, in a journey through this Oz-like land. So, uh, Lauren... Introduce yourself. Take it away. How's it going? I guess it's going pretty good. I'm Lauren. I use she date. I am at the Stray Kiwi on Twitter and everywhere else. Um, I will be our GM for this session. Maybe the penultimate one. Maybe the final one. We'll see. Um, I co-created this game with Jesse Ross, who is a delightful human being, and you can check out more at girlunderground.org if you would like to pick up the game yourself. Um, how about you, Judd? Uh, hey, I'm Judd. Uh, he, him, and... I have no idea. I just blanked. I don't. I don't know who I am. I'm a, a Thunderbolt. I, I can't stop thinking about Fortnitely. I mean, How you're, awesome that you're is. playing the right game to forget yourself. Uh, anyway, I am playing. I'll, I'll get back to the game. Yeah, I remember. I can remember things about the game. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing Thunderbolt, who is a uh, uh, fairly logical talking pig, uh, with some some good advice for kids everywhere. I think, and uh, yeah. And I, I also, if you want to find me, I podcast uh, at a on a podcast called Daydreaming About Dragons. It's really you can, good. You can find me there, Daydreaming. And I hope to see you and hear from you. And I'm excited to game. I kind of woke up in a cruddy mood, so it's good to like have a game to look forward to. And uh, I just listened to Neil Gaiman and N.K. Jemison talk for over an hour, so I'm like, I'm ready to roll. Let's do this. Heck yeah. I'm I'm I am invested in the power of uh, of fantasy fiction. That's 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 let's do it. Excellent. So I think we should kick off with talking about what if and lost it, <laughs> so we can uh, inform folks at home and also inform ourselves of what happened. Um, I recall last time our crew <clears throat> um, made their way through the whispering woods that were very manipulative and filled with lies and um, hooked onto some of Faye's uh, fears around her family situation and the sort of obligations put upon her and, and the expectations that she has um, in her family. Um, but we battled through that and came across the dragon's den for this potentially scary lady came out uh, and uh, informed the crew that she was indeed a dragon and she could teach them magic and that she liked living here because um, she, the fear is useful to protect herself like, since folks are uh, fearful of her being a big, big, scary dragon. Um, we... Faye, I recall, was delighted to learn some magic from this dragon, so we had a cool training montage where she carved a staff out of some of the wooden the the wood in the woods <laughs> because uh, it was all about harnessing your fear and like sort of channeling it into something you could use, use to protect yourself. And um, what else? Oh, and then I think uh, just as we were like basking <laughs> in the culmination of that montage scene, Francis Lightfeather came in his library of heart <laughs> where we learned that he had uh, captured some of the fame was sort of stealing magic from people to bring to the crowing king but Bima was there to free the fake queen who was trapped within uh win the dragon's heart back that was then gifted back to the dragon and everything's looking pretty rosy as we're heading off to go use these forces for good against the crowing king um did i miss things that people would like to share from last time yes go thunderable <laughs> two things uh i remember there was a bit about like channeling your feelings and like turning that into kind of like heat and power rather than letting it calcify which i thought was pretty cool yeah. and uh and pretty powerful and, and good and important for Faye. and i i object to that abomination being called a library uh i think at best it's a museum and even then like i i i i don't know I don't it's even a collection. Know I call it that. At, it's a, it's a private collection. Private collection at best. So uh, anyway, little nit to pick. 
with that guy. For, for those of you that don't know, Judd spent a, a very significant stint as a librarian in, in uh, uh, current life. So, yeah. Uh, Actually, wait, I felt sorry, not sorry for calling it a library. No, 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 no. It's, it's totally cool. I, I, the, the thing is, though, is that a guy like that would probably call it a library because he's never been in one. So it, it's totally awesome. It makes, him even, it, was, did, it makes him an even more despicable villain. <laughs> Uh, I remember enjoying the fake queen, uh, having a very Guillermo del Toro vibe, but like, uh, I can't remember, did Beam of Shadow end up being in that collection or, or does the Crown King have it? Oh yeah, you're right. The Shadow was in that collection. Okay. Yeah, I remember that there was like a fuss about it, but I don't, I don't remember what happened in the, in the final tally. Uh, cause we were just like so focused on escaping and like freeing things and running away and... It was it was just such a yeah. hot, such a fuss that I I forget what finally happened to it. Oh, we could totally open with that. <laughs> oh no, I, I mean, does does anybody remember? Like, I I, I actually just don't. Uh, I think it was in there. I think you freed it. Like, I, I recall it going like against the gloss and like sort of being like, oh my god, it's it's my other half. Um, but I I think you freed it. But then I think we yeah there was we were so caught up in like the escape um as you like. Save the fake queen, <laughs> and uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't think we fully addressed it. We could, yeah, I think we should start there. All right. Um, I think uh, yeah, like I like to think it's been. Oh yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of open in that quiet space after people have been saved and the dragon's like heart has been restored to her. Um, And I think, um, ooh, yeah, we'll say that, we'll say that, um, you folks have been there for like maybe another couple of days up to a week, um, like sort of refining your skills and, uh, eating some good food and preparing for like your final stretch to go take down the crowing king. Um, what have you been up to in this week? Like, let, let's do a little sort of like screenshot if, um. Yeah, what what fantastical things you've been up to? Have you learned some magics? <laughs> Have you? I don't know what else. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to hear. Didn't Faye learn to fly? Am I? Am I? I think she learned how to channel fire. That's, right. Yeah, that was the thing that she learned. How yeah, to she do. Yeah. she learned to breathe fire. That was that was a that was a trick. But do you oh. want to start learning how to fly? Is that a thing, Faye? I no, 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 no. I, I think we did get a little bit of that. I think she did fly for like briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I feel like Thunderbolt would be talking to the dragon a lot. I think that's someone else with with opinions, and I think he'd like talking to someone who is that wise and and powerful and interesting. If we're still there, if we haven't moved on, yeah, we're we're, we're staying yeah, there for a yeah. couple of days to a, to up to a week, so it's just okay. a little bit. Um, I think that if it if it comes around to Bima, uh, I think at first she's overjoyed to have an audience, and uh, she's off and tells tall tales for a bit. But then after a while, she just kind of gets like, "I'm bored. There's nothing to steal here." <laughs> like, she definitely wants to 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 get going and moving on and like at first you know she's uh she's all like yeah why yes i did rescue people i am a hero and then like by the end of like day four or five she's like if Faye is trying to read a book of spells or like practice things she's like sitting behind her and occasionally just like batting at her coat or like going through her <laughs> backpack and just generally being horribly annoying and um and I I would love to know what like trick you've taught the teapot <laughs> in your in the time that you've had. Uh I think I, I taught it that if I put it in a container, it's supposed to steal something and keep it inside itself so that I can uh uh I can then like, you know, abscond with it and then I will retrieve whatever item it has managed to uh um uh, capture like out of it later. That's very cute. I, I picture you, you like, set the teapot off to, like, steal something from the dragon without the dragon noticing, <laughs> and then, like... Uh, it's like yeah. a single <laughs> coin, right? Like, or something yeah. like that. Uh, it's not even important that it's, like, valuable. It's just important that the teapot learns the trick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Totally. Um, 
And I think like I think Faye in this time gets another letter from home. Um, I think it sort of appears like on that bookshelf where Faye found that book from home and that letter from her pen pal. Um, so I, I'd love to know like what else is. Yeah, what? Hmm. What news does this letter deliver that reminds you that you should move on and find a path home? Huh. And either or both of you can answer, answer that question this day. I know that Faye has two siblings and is lost as the middle child. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that her older sibling is... Uh, is her younger sibling the responsible one, Judd? I think it was. Yeah. Uh, so so it could just be that something's going on in the family because it strikes me as uh, Faye having troubles with her parents. Uh, but maybe even if her relationship to her siblings is not uh, particularly close, it could be that like the younger sibling has written a letter... Uh, even though they themselves don't like, like it's it's unprompted. It's like I do not know where you are, but the letter still finds her, right? Because it's magic. Uh, so. Oh yeah, like maybe it's like a journal page that's like written to Faye <laughs> that sort of winds its way into this bookshelf. It's very is, sweet. Is, is one of the things that the that she included in the letter uh, like a uh, Have you seen this girl poster? Like, have we been gone that long? Or is uh, it... yeah, or, or it could cool. be, or it could just be a moment. I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm cool. I'm cool. If you, if you, if you're, yeah, then I'm yeah. Uh, and I think maybe like the older I'm yeah sibling and the mother like got together and made like a like a a, a badly xeroxed. Have you seen this girl poster? You know, We're like in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. We're in the schmaties, whatever this is. Uh, and uh, is it mimeographed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, xeroxed <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, it's I think that there's, there's, that. you know, it's, it, you can like see the, the graph paper, you know. It's the fact that there's, uh, it's the fact that, okay, so first off, it's photocopying, but like second off, it's the fact that they didn't just hit print on their computer and just be like, print, 100, done. Right. Very it's cool. a thing. Uh, definitely <laughs> thing. dates this, this girl underground game to a very specific era. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, she she doesn't have a phone, right? Like, there's a different. Yeah, it's yeah. true. That's true. If you don't if you don't have that cell phone permanently glued to your pocket, you are pre two thousand and four. So right. <laughs> um. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, and I think like. I think like after receiving that letter from home, there is the kind of dissonance between this is kind of cool hanging out here and letting all this magic and stuff, but you feel that tug of like, oh, there are people who need me at home. Um, which like maybe isn't a feeling Faye's had for some time being that sort of forgotten middle kid. Um, but I think we sort of like zoom in on uh, the dragon and her uh, lady form and she has like a, a broomstick and she's like tapping at pipes <laughs> and like, uh, at, like crawl spaces and kind of cursing to herself and dragon and um like if like, g is like like oh like what are you doing are you making some music like could i join in this is super cool i always thought i'd be a great percussionist and like rambling and the dragon's like oh there's like some it's like a rat or there's something in these pipes and they're sort of like banging it and you can kind of hear i think like you hear scuttering and scuttling and then like I think Bima, you recognize sort of like echoes of your own voice like down these pipes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I, I think like uh, that we hear the sound sort of like go through the pipes and like sort of ding against some of the walls and like they uh, the pipes rattle and um, then come to like a stop as like the whatever it is, uh, gets stuck in like a corner pipe, like a quarter pipe angle like that. And the dragon's like nudging at it and it's like, oh, I don't know what's in there, <laughs> but it's got to come out somewhere, like somehow. Um, what, oh, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll have, uh, Judd, would you like to play Faye for this, for this? Sure. Game? Sure. 
Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, I think Faye like is looking at the the like the letter on the wanted poster, and she looks up and and um and, and kind of thinks to herself, maybe you know, I don't have time for this. I've got to start going back. I've got to. I, I just don't have time for this anymore. Um, but she doesn't say that. I think she says, "Yeah, I'll I'll help with the rat." So so there's something in the pipes. I'm not sure I understand. Hmm. Yes, I think what you could do is shoot a good jet of flame up it. Maybe that'll dislodge it or, or whatever. It, it won't hurt the rat? Whoa! It may or may not, who's to say? <laughs> Why can you speak rat? Are you good at coaxing small mm -hmm. critters out of spaces? No, no, I don't speak rat. And I think she she takes a bit what she's learned and she like focuses that that feeling of uh guilt that all the time she has spent here in this magical place has been selfish and uh like channels that feeling until like there's like a haze of heat around her um and then just blows a pume of of fire into the into the pipe, you know, yeah. Nice. I think like G is a bit taken aback by this. Like, still isn't quite used to phase magic powers, and kind of just like a oh, and like a backs away at that sudden like gust of um like fire that you shoot up these pipes. And then I think like um, we we can kind of see like little like holes. Um, this like burst of uh like orange and yellow is like a travels up there. Um, and then uh, I think it sort of as it approaches that corner, this corner like sort of quivers and shakes and then hisses. And I think like it sort of busts open and um, this like sort of very quick ball of like black uh, shoots out and then sort of like bounces around the ca like the dragon's cabin and uh, hides underneath like um, a I think I think it hides underneath that bookshelf, like it's at the very, very bottom. Um, and then it's sort of, it's sort of the room becomes quiet. What do you do? <laughs> so it's out of your pipes. Is that all you wanted? I think like the dragon is like grumbling. It's like, ah, yes, that'll. Thank you very much for your assistance. I guess, like, looking at that sort of busted, like, uh, pipe up there and just scratching her chin. And, uh... I think she... says, like, I have to go fetch my letter <laughs> to go and, like, see to this, but, uh... Miss Dragon, I, I think we have to go. You have to leave? Yes. Well, if you leave, would you please take this, whatever it is with you, so it can no longer disturb me. Does anyone speak rat? Uh, I speak bag. That'll so do. I think I think Bima like pulls out like a, a burlap sack, which she frequently stuffs stuff in so that she can run away with it, like flaps it open and then, uh, Sort of like rubs her rubs her hands together and looks around with her cat like eyes, and then sets it near that bookshelf. And I think uh, you 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 see her like whisper something to like nothing, and then her shadow actually like stretches underneath the bookshelf to try and spook the rat. And uh, uh, I think I'll try and or I mean it's black. It's probably not a rat, so I'm gonna try and catch it in the bag anyway. <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, I was thinking this uh, this uh, object might be your shadow. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, weak, My right? bad. I'm shadow. jumping steps ahead. Yes. No, it's fine. Uh, I didn't project. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I I think at that point, yeah, you know, she'll 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 set up the bag and then just like put a put a book like on top of the shelf and like set up a couple more, almost like dominoes, and be like, uh huh. And then she'll like shoulder check the 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 shelf so that all that stuff falls over and makes the clatter, and then try and catch the thing as it comes out oh um, nice yeah and you like as the books clatter down like the 
object and like vibrates underneath and tries to like shoot at it again and then i think like goes straight into your bag kind of hits the back and the it's sort of like doing this to try and get out of the bag <laughs> Problem solved. We're taking. Oh, hello! <laughs> like, yeah. I think like the shadow when you look in the bag sort of like presses itself against like the walls to try and blend in with the like the lap encasing it, and it looks sort of like very like it looks very terrified. Like, like you might find a terrified like mouse. This is like I don't know like what's going on. I just know that like this is scary. <laughs> like, like, I have I no like, idea what <laughs> shadows like. I haven't had one for too long. So I think if it wants to, if it feels comfortable in there for the minute, um, I think we'll bring it with us and sort of deal with it on the road, as it were. Nice. I think, like, you, you close it and it, you feel it settle a bit. Um, it stops, like, poking at the, the edges. And you, you kind of get the idea that it's going to be, like, not napping <laughs> or, like, sort of sleeping comfortably in the, in the back of your bag. It's uh, alongside the teapot. <laughs> I'm guessing that the next time we make a camp when we're getting out of the woods, I'm going to... And try and see him be like, hey, do you want to reattach? Like, get like the needle and thread out kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Put Brad. something sticky on the soles of my feet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like um, the dragon returns with like a, a ladder, and I think she returns too with like these sort of ticket stubs. Um, and she goes over to you, Faye, and like sort of hands uh, enough out for like the, your little like group of companions. And says, um, these are good for one favor. Um, specifically for the Restless Wreckage. It's uh, a ship that used to be in the employ of the Crowing King. Um, but I believe they now uh, make and deliver baked goods <laughs> uh, around the forest for people in fear that need comfort. Um, they're perhaps your best bet to sneak successfully into the Crowing King's kingdom, for they know all the secret passages. Thank you very much, Miss Dragon. You've been very helpful, and I've learned a lot here. Oh, of course. I, I'm glad I could be of assistance. Uh, you were perhaps one of my finest apprentices, <laughs> if I do so myself. I hope to come back someday. Oh, I hope you do. You're always welcome to stay here and learn some more magics. And who knows, perhaps you'll be this land's greatest wizard if we can ever get magic back to this place successfully. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Thank you. I think she looks at everybody else and says, we all ready? Maybe she says like something her mother says when she's getting ready to go. Ready, Freddy? <laughs> Who's Freddy? I don't know. I think we're all Freddy. <laughs> yeah, um, I, think, I think we're on the road. I think Bima's just like, uh, I don't know how to respond to that. So she does what she always does, which is she starts moving. Cool. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> and I think we get this sort of montage of like the dragon uh, over over top of like our group moving towards uh, the rest of the wreckage and it's advice like when you hit the first like ashen tree make a right and then like ignore the voices in your head that tell you to make a left and like keep going through there and then you'll land a bridge <laughs> that'll take you to like um, a dock and it may look like the dock extends into nothingness but no that's just a lie <laughs> and like sort of it gives you this advice of like you're traipsing through the whispering woods and i think like um as you make your way through the mist and you can kind of feel like those plucking anxieties in like the corner of your mind and you can occasionally catch the scent of peppermint and pipe smoke um on the air which remind you so much of like your distant parent your distant military parent but then you come to um it really is like a sort of wooden creaky planks that look like they shouldn't hold anyone's weight, but and they extend out like into this very white sort of like fluffy cloud nothingness. Um, and as you make your way through the mist, you can make out like the shape of this quilt like ship that's made of materials that are Yes, wood, but also fabric and silks and metals. 
and you can see that over time, um, the... What is the ship time, traveling on? Uh, as far as you can tell, uh, air. <laughs> Bima sighs in relief and goes, oh, thank goodness, I hate water. Because <laughs> she was like, she heard like, you have to go to a dock and she was like, mm -hmm. and it's like the dock may extend it to nothingness. And she was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> nothingness is better than water. I love it. Um, and I would love to know from the two of you something on the air that smells like home and like a kind of like a good a good way like a way that sort of you breathe that in and you're like oh, like I this is my this is my house this is my family these are my people are you asking Strash and Judd or Bima and Faye uh I'll Strash and Judd I uh, yeah oh actually you know what I would we can have Judd respond for Faye and Beamer respond as Beamer. Oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I like it. Yeah. All right. Say what? Um, Beam yeah. Yeah. I think Faye comes from a house where there's like a mud room with the, with the washer and dryer in it. And so I think it's the smell of like fabric softener and like the dryer running. Oh, nice. <clears throat> and that, the ship, I think, makes that sort of dryer noise like as it sort of sits in the dock. Oh, um, nice. Idling. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Bima? What's what's particularly smells like uh, your home in a way that is actually kind of comforting? So I think it's actually not a house. I think it's the the smell of um, like dust and autumn leaves, that kind of thing. Um, maybe like the faint set of, a scent of like chestnuts being roasted. Um, Ooh, nice. Uh, but. Uh, the thing that she thinks of as her home is actually like her tree house. Uh, like I'm sure she had a tree house as a kid and that was more of a home to her than like her actual house house. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we go it. with. I think like it, it, uh, when you like, sort of a further approach, um, at one of those like rope letters that have like rolls down that is like totally looks like their rope letter that goes to your tree house, like back home too. Um, Maybe they know think... how to reattach shadows. <laughs> Ooh, he's hoping. <laughs> um, and I think like G is like tugging you, like, oh, like, come on, like I can't wait to get on this ship. I've heard so many things about it in like the books that I've read. Um, and sort of like pulls you to get on. I, I think like, and as you clamber up this uh, rope ladder, it doesn't look like there's any people tending to the ship. There's no crew. It, it looks like very abandoned. Um, the, I think like the, the steering wheel kind of like spins idly, um, the sail sort of like flap listlessly. <laughs> uh, what do you, what do you do? I think Faye kind of crosses her arms and kind of like, like snorts or like breathes through her nose and kind of frustration and just like a little bit of fire comes out, like. I don't have time for this shit type of thing. Lovely. I think Bima looks at Gia and says, uh, actually she looks at the teapot too. And it's just like, time to steal some pastries. <laughs> I think like, the teapot sort of like takes to the air. <laughs> um, Hashtag priorities. Bima has them. <laughs> And I think like even sort of starts pointing you like in the direction, like it sort of like assesses the air and then sort of like points hot and cold, like which way to go to get some pastries. Um, and I think if you do sort of like descend below like the, the upper layer, um, you are hit by like this wall of uh, granulated sugar <laughs> smells and like sort of caramel and um, warm bread. And it, it smells like a big pillowy like a uh, hug. <laughs> Um, and there is like a fireplace going um, that with like an oven there and there are like baked goods so, uh, it's presented on a table. There's like sort of stacked trays of bun, like sticky buns and uh, lots of other wonderful treats. Um, but above Dick, I think uh, Faye, when you stamp your foot and huff out a little bit of smoke, um, you feel 
you feel the ship like shift underneath your feet as if someone's like trying to turn to see you and if you look to the figurehead at the front um it does sort of turn to look over its shoulder at you i think like at that point you um you realize that the wood it's made from is like is moving and it's has the sort of presence of life about it and it says quite anxiously like who goes there like who is who is upon me <laughs> like what is this hello my name is Faye. These are my friends. I'll let them introduce themselves, but we need... <laughs> we need passage to the Crowing King's Court. And we heard that you could find us a way. And I think, um, Faye, when the figurehead hears your voice and focuses on you, I think when you look to it, it has the same eyes as your other parent. Um, that we agenda that, but it has like this, the same sort of like crow's footed, <laughs> like um, kind kind eyes of like the your the parent who raised you. Um, and I think that the figurehead says like Fay Fay that name sounds so very familiar. Wait, wait, wait. come come closer so I can get a better look at you. Yeah, I'll come closer. I think like the ship sort of like reaches out to like it reaches out a hand. Yeah. Um, to sort of take yours. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll 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 take it. And I think like you feel the ship like soften with a bit of relief, um, and it grips your hand a little tighter and says. I feel as if I've known you for such a long time, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Is this... You must have traveled upon me before. I would remember it. Maybe you knew my grandmother? Perhaps. Who was she? She would have been wearing this, and I'll, I'll show her the, the pendant. Oh, neat. And the figurehead, I think, um, its eyes widen a little bit. Its wooden eyes like widen a little bit, and it says, "Like, oh, that was the pendant of the captain." Oh, where did you find this? Did you find it? Did you get it from her? Where is she? I got it from her. Yes. I thought it had been long gone. I thought it was lost. I thought. I thought I would never find the ship's compass again. I think uh, Bima, with her cheeks as big as a chipmunk's, is just like, wah, 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 wah. and then she like takes a second, waving her hand to like chew a bit, and then says, "What happened to the captain?" I think the ship like turn, like looks a little gray when that question's put to it, um, and it says. Um, She, she left us, which I think ultimately was the right decision. I've never quite been strong enough to live up to her expectations. I've Aww. never quite been, I've never been good at knowing where to go. So I don't blame her for what she did. Why, she leave? Did she leave before or after you you worked for the Crowing King? <laughs> I think he'd say that like the brutal judge. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think like I think like I did just to just to step out and like play Thunderbolt for a second. Like I think yeah, let's like, swap, let's yeah, swap, Judd. Sounds good. I think the Thunderbolt's like savage. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we can go around. Uh, no, no, yeah, it's so it's fine. If you just wanted like one, uh, yeah, yeah, one yeah, comment, I just said that one. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 nice. Yeah. yeah. 
and like the shit it gets really quiet then and like you wonder for a second if like whatever you've said has just shocked the ship into like complete yeah. objectification and you kind of yeah. hear that flap of like sails and like the like sort of humdrum of the dryer and it says finally well it was after or about the time of which we ended our service to the crowing king Everyone makes mistakes. It happens. It's good that you stopped. We need a secret way in. A way that he won't find us or his crows. Especially those white ones. Oh, the bow and crows. They're havoc upon my sails. I swore that I would not travel back there again. It's only ever caused me hurt and pain and, and loss. I would rather... Never set eyes upon the crow and Kenner as minions again. I understand. If you just tell us the way, we can find it. It will be a long journey, girl. How long? Mm, never getting this mess, it can be very easy to lose yourself. Even those of the strongest conviction I has that would have a hard time wandering in its meandering trails to get to where they want to be. I think she asked how long. Well, how long is long? Uh. I would hazard if you were swift and brave, it would take some weeks. On foot, at least. Uh, we're really asking how uh, fast it is on, on boat, per se. Uh, some some hours, I would imagine. Great! We'll do that one. That one sounds better. I think the ship, like, flusters a little bit. <laughs> and it kind of says, well... Problem I... solved! I'm gonna go get more pastries. <laughs> <laughs> Bima goes marching up. She's like, this, this situation is now done. <laughs> I think, like, the ship looks to you, Faye, with this pleading look of, like, please don't. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think the ship says too, like, I think, like, the ship, yeah, says, why why do you wish to seek counsel with the crowing king? We're not seeking counsel. We're we're I don't know, finishing a conflict, maybe. Well if you do, you should be careful. And just as to Gia and says her kind are very valuable. Not just to the crowing king. Yeah, that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. We're done with that. <laughs> I think everyone. I think. I think everyone's done with that. I think Bima leads I'm sorry. out. Leads out of the cabin and gives you one of those like thumbs ups. <laughs> Just leads back and in. I think keeps eating. Faye says a sentence that her mother said to her. Oh, cool. Which is like. We don't have time for your feelings right now. <laughs> we need you to just do this. And like, I don't think she notices it, but like the people watching the movie would notice, right? Because that is definitely something that like would have been said in the real world epilogue, prologue, you know? Uh, That's very cool. And yeah, she says, we don't have time. We, we need to get there. We need to get this done. Uh, I have a question. Is this standing strong in your convictions or are you? Yeah. I don't know what this is. This is like <laughs> that feels I, I, right. I yeah. mean, and, and actually, like there are plenty of convictions that back you up here, uh, Judd. Uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. do what's right, not what you're told. Uh, not showing your feelings is the same as lying. Uh, 
Who's it? And that, uh, and that great belief, uh, sometimes you have to bully people who are abused to confront their trauma. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm not I'm not 100% sold on this one uh but but I I'm yeah I'm glad the game is backing me out I don't know We can totally roll yeah I guess like it we we could play it out it's like a conversation if you would like cool. to explore those sort of toxic mentalities that you yeah, may yeah. sort of take on from my parents or we could or you could stand strong it's up, it's up to you it's up to uh, you. I think I'm going to stand strong Sounds good excellent so when you stand strong in your convictions uh, start with one die and then take an additional die for each relevant belief and roll. So our beliefs are not I showing mean, your feelings. Is, oops, sorry. I, I was going to say, do what's right, not what you're told is a big one. Yes. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Sometimes but... the wrong action is better than no action is huge, too. Ooh. Yeah, yes, that's, yeah. That, that's definitely one. <laughs> And yeah. breathe your feelings like a dragon breathes out fire. <laughs> also, totally. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think those are your three big ones, Judd, there. Yeah. So is that a total of four dice? Yeah, four dice keep two, I believe. Yes, yeah, highest two. Well, let's see if the dice are kind tonight. Eleven. Oh, nice. Hey, that's solid. So on an eleven. Uh, how do you overcome the challenge? Like, you, like so... You say this to the ship this yeah. phrase from like your from your mother without thinking about it how does the ship respond um yeah i think the ship starts to cry mm. uh i think we're pushing it and it it kind of breaks down and uh and Faye realizes that she's being a jerk and she says i i'm really sorry uh I, I don't want to make you do this and I, I can't and and as much as I want to get there quickly so I can get back to my family, I won't. But the faster we get there, the less people are gonna have the experience with the crow king that you had. So it's up to you. But I could really use your help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he was terrible. And I think like the the ship um, wipes it like the sort of tears that spill out of like its wood. It, it looks very strange, like sort of sap welling um, at like sort of the a wood of a cup branch. Um, and it says, "You're right. I I've been. I mean, I am a coward." I remember when I had that conviction. I, I remember it. No. Go on. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> she says, you're not a coward. I don't think you're a coward. No one thinks you're a coward. And if they do, they're, they don't understand. I think it's hard to know where to go. It's a really hard thing. And, and with bad people like the Crowing King telling you to go places, sometimes it can seem like because they have firm ideas that they know where you should go. And, and I know that's hard. And, and I know it must have been really hard. And, and it doesn't make you a coward to and not want to go back there. I, the ship like finds itself nodding. Um, and it says, you're right. There is some duty to be had in making sure that the same hurts don't cascade onto other people, onto future people. I... I will take you there. I, I cannot go the whole way. But... Perhaps this time I can find the place I meant to go. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Hey, yep. Sad Ship, do you have a name? I think the ship like looks a bit taken aback at that. Um, All ships it, have names. <laughs> and it says, 
I had one some time ago. I I seem to recall it being stripped away. All of you stripped away when, when when I stopped service with the Crow and King. I'll be honest, I don't feel like myself anymore. I feel like I was so defined by that experience. I don't know who I am. Is there a name you would give me? Oh no, I mean, I, I don't, I've, um, I've only just met you. Yeah, I feel like I've known you for so long. <laughs> That's nice. What is the name anyway? What's your grandma's I... name? Ooh, well, what was Space Grandmother's name? <laughs> uh... If you're confused, Judd, I will point out that the book does have name lists for each playbook, oh. including the That's... girl. Yeah. That's right. I will... Uh... <laughs> that, that that is that is the secret sauce of the apocalypse I've got world it. name engine. It's not the fact that you have to name your character from that list. It's the fact that the list is handy if you need it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. I'll pick a sturdy name. No. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Uh, her name was Kiva. Do we already have a Kiva? No, we don't. Kiva nope. is perfect. Yeah. Do we want to name the ship the Kiva? The Kiva. Yeah. <laughs> I think the ship sort of, yeah, like sort of settles on like Kiva. Kiva. That was the name of our previous captain. Good enough. You can be the Kiva. Does that feel like it fits? You can change I... it later if you don't like it. That's true. That's true. I think it will do for now. It, it feels comfortable. It feels scary, but. Kiva the second. It... For the second, I think like sort of large wooden fingers like rub at its chin. It says, "I, yes, I think that's acceptable." Great. For the second, is there is there like any drink in the pastry room? Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> you awesome. are welcome to help yourselves. No, that's not that's not the why. <laughs> I'm I'm a smash a bottle of something on on top of the ship. It's probably not alcoholic, but Biba doesn't actually know that that's important. <laughs> I'd be like, I oh, name you nice. Kiva the second. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you do like a uh, sort of pastel like sort of bubble like pastel bubbles like sort of split out of the bottle and um like sort of sparkles and red rainbows kind of like emit from it. Yep, I am so glad I did not drink that. I have no idea what that would do to my digestive tract. <laughs> but. Huzzah! <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, like, uh, we, the ship, I think, like, the, the sound of the dryer, like, amps up as the ship, like, it's ready to leave. Um, and you can't see any oars or anything or any wings, like, propelling the ship, but you sort of feel that engine rumble, like, kick up and... Um, takes off from the dock is like we see these pastel like bubbles like in its wake and the sails like blossom and bloom like very proud <laughs> and the sort of like well-loved ramshackle cool like nature of the the ship sort of like busts through the mist like into the skies and it's now a good time for i think i think we're just under an hour but now might maybe get a good time to take a quick break before we and then uh, and tackle the castle of the crowing king yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, all right, folks. Well, uh, bear with us. Uh, we'll be back pretty quick, and um, hopefully, uh, well, well, we'll see if, if if we close out uh, close out the campaign here. So, time to be strong in our beliefs. All right, see everyone soon. Awesome.